My date with the laureate took place at a little cafe on a pedestrian street someplace other than Paris or Rome. The laureate wore trousers that showed signs of wear around the knees, as if from travel, the way blue in the sky fades a little toward the bright hole of the sun. We took turns ordering espressos and bottles of mineral water, neither of us offering to pay for the other. We could have made the line move a little more quickly if we had done this together, but the black-haired woman behind the counter appeared unbothered that we did not do so. I ordered a bagel, which I thought must be an ugly word in most languages. I told the laureate I was thinking this about bagel, but could not tell if he agreed or was just immune to such pronouncements from men such as me. A mustache like his, I thought, hides subtleties in the way a man's mouth curves, and I reconsidered growing my own. I asked the woman whom I should have thought of as a barista but did not, if she had any plum preserves. Barista, to my ear, is an attractive word. Nothing on her face hid her annoyance as she dug unsuccessfully through the jam packets in their wicker basket I could have just as easily dug through myself but did not. Plum preserves would have tasted good while the laureate and I bantered one topic, then another. We discussed anatomical differences between ravens and crows, agreeing that the former are both more beautiful and more ominous than the latter. We agreed we were thankful to live around them, all the rough noises they make back in the depths of their ruffled throats. I felt obligated to speak of their cousin, the magpie. The laureate seemed to humor me in thinking that my relationship with the magpie was more complicated than with any other bird. The barista gathered cups from a table adjacent to ours, their even whiteness marred slightly by little rings of dried milk foam. We agreed that flocks of starlings undulating in wind-borne formations are beautiful even if the individual birds are not. Cups clinked together in their gray tub as the black-haired barista moved away. Date is not the best word for this excursion. The laureate was not even there with me, in the bagel shop, with my white cup of espresso, my two glass bottles of sparkling water, one clear, the other blue. Because the barista was no longer paying me any mind, I felt none of the usual hesitation in whispering to him that sometimes I went to one of his books like a church, some church with more than merely formal differences from that first church I ever visited on that Boy Scout field trip back when blackbirds were still just something to shoot at, with a pellet gun, coffee something adult, adults enjoyed in a way I did not understand. I whispered to him that sometimes poems like his made me want to act less like some barrister, pushing my powdered locks off the collar of my black robes, shimmering under the morning sky, not yet free of the deep blue of dawn and night's old rain clouds. Each poem's a bird, he whispered, while outside some leaves flew into the air. Yeah.